Joshua 24 verse 19 Joshua said to the people you are not able to serve the Lord he is a holy God he is a jealous God he will not forgive your rebellion and your sins if you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you this is the warning that Joshua at the end of his life gave soberly to the nation of Israel his point is that don't assume that because God has been good to you have experienced good things from God that he will continue to do that to you even though if you forsake him there's a condition to it the condition is called do not forsake the Lord <laughs> it's like if you forsake your spouse in a marriage relationship divorce is going to come it's as simple as that the covenant that God has made with us will never be broken by him if he's broken up it will be by us not him because he is faithful he is absolute faithful he never changed he's the immutable God he's the great I am he's the same yesterday today and tomorrow so now Joshua is saying that even though God has been good to you but don't stop thinking don't take God for granted in a cavalier attitude if you take God in an easy way cavalier like off-handed way like light-hearted like doesn't concern you much like God is not very important now that kind of attitude is going to breed it's going to breed corruption alienation eventually eventually um, causing a rift and that rift is going to grow and it's going to get big and it's going to cause apostasy even though in that generation this is Joshua 24 right at the, the end of the book of Joshua now after that comes the horrific book of Judges. <coughs> Judges sees the, the the doom of Israel in many ways, in many many sense. <coughs> it is a, a very sad book. But of course, some theologians has argued that um, in spite of what is seen. To be total disaster and sadness but the Spirit of God <coughs> has been transferred in some ways from Joshua to many judges so many people got a chance to serve God in a more tangible way realistic uh, uh, um, more meaningfully and the bigger ways even though they all fell but the point is this apostasy happened within one generation after that and that warning came to pass God literally wiped out one generation after that Josh, God, nation of Israel served, Josh, uh, served the Lord well throughout the time of and the leadership of, of Moses and throughout the time of Joshua. But after Joshua died and the whole generation died, the whole generation of Israel, they were living with Joshua, they were under Joshua's leadership, died. The new generation arose who did not know the Lord. He did not see the signs and wonders the Lord has done. It's horrific. And they forsook the Lord and turned around and served Baals. Baals is the uh, 
so-called the formidable alternative God, the, uh, the idols, the fake God. But it's very prevalent in the time of Israel and the Middle Ages time, Baals. It is the uh, religions of the, of the neighboring countries. And today, if you relate that to our situation, that Baals is in the form of money, power, sex, greed, evil, all kind of things that sort of capture you until you lost your bearings, you lost your sense of decision making. It's idols, gods, small g, gods. Bios may not be around today, but Bios is very much alive, alike, alive in all kinds of modern, modern idols. We call idols. The idols is in our hearts. So, so what happened is this new generation arose, and they didn't know the Lord, and they forsook the Lord promptly and turn to Baals. You know why is it so easy? My suspicion is that it is so easy to follow Baals because Baals is your definition of who God is in your own mind. It's at your dictate. You are the God eventually because you tell Baals what you want. You try to appease him. That's, a, that's, the, uh, that's the bottom spit of religion of today as well. People are not... Um, People are throwing the shots. So, but following the Lord is another different thing. It's a covenant with the Almighty God. He's He's so powerful and Almighty that no one can take Him lightly. And He is incredibly relational. And He is like a father. He's like a dream kind of past for restoration and healing and holistic living but people don't know the new generation did know the Lord and forsook the Lord and committed apostasy the God judgment battle the book of Judges if you read that you'll find that so what do we do with the next generation our own children must teach them well the word of God catechism I didn't have catechism when my kids were growing up so I missed a huge part of it but I believe in the divine sovereign God he will lead us to the promised land remember Joseph was thrown to the pit he went through a very tough time but in the end God came through for him, he became the prime minister of Egypt and saved Israel. Who would have thought? That is incredible. Same thing. Your kids or your loved ones may be in dire shape, far from the Lord, but don't despair. Just like Joseph, don't despair. God is not done with them. Hope is on the way. Salvation is coming. O Zion, behold, the Lord your God is coming. My psalm says, get out from your dust. Put on garments of beauty. Put on strength. That's what some, uh, Psalm 1, 120, I believe. Uh, no, Isaiah 52. You know, I just preach on that. So, that is what we believe in. We must take care of the next generation. Not only our children, but the kids in colleges today. We have to pray for reformation. Our ed the education in our colleges needs reformation. We must not allow woke indoctrination. We want to bring wholesome, real science and art education not indoctrination. God bless.